Welcome to the Glenray Tudor Marbles Project. Your objective is I will demonstrate quality craftsmanship through care and use of supplies and materials. Here is Glenray Tudor. He is an American artist and known for his photorealism. You will need your purple paper, your paper with the circles on it, and this one that looks like a comic. So you have the purple paper, the one that looks like a comic, and the one with the three circles on it. Go ahead and glue down the comic one on top of the purple paper. Once you stick it on there, a good idea is to turn the paper over and I like to say give it a little back rub. Make sure you put your first name, last name, and your room number on the back of the paper. So, Glenray Tudor was a photorealist painter, which means that he painted to look as realistic as possible, like a photograph. On this circular uh, paper, we are going to try three different marbles. You can do them however you want. I'm going to show you three ways to do it. Um, I'm going to do one that kind of has these wavy lines in it and one that has these lines that go across and then another one that has this dotted kind of look. Okay, and I'm going to do three t different techniques. So one of them, the first one, I'm going to use color pencils. The second one, I'm going to use um, Crayola markers and a wet paintbrush. And the third one I'm going to show you is going to be with watercolor. Since we don't have white paint to show the highlights, what we need to do is we need to kind of map out where those little shiny spots are going to be before we um, before we start to color because we don't want to color it all in. But if in class, if we were to do this, we would have white paint that we kind of make little marks going around the edges. So as you can see, I'm kind of going around the outside-ish areas uh, and that way it'll make that look a little more round. So I'm making these curved kind of highlighted little boxes or triangles um, around the circles and I'm doing this so that I don't color in those spaces when I'm when I am coloring. All right I'm going to grab my color pencils now um, you might do all three of your marbles with color pencil. Uh, if you have Crayola markers, you can try all three with the markers or one with the markers. Or if you want to try your watercolor, if you're at home, you can do that as well. It's up to you. So we are going to um, try this with color pencil. So I'm just, I took what's called analogous colors, colors that are next to each other on the color wheel. And I'm going to try those out in the first one, making that curved kind of kind of stretched out S shape. I'm going to speed these up a little bit because you don't necessarily need to watch me color in for the whole class period.
for this next section, I'm taking another set of analogous colors. This time I am using greens and yellows and a little bit of teal. And I'm making a bunch of little dots or kind of short lines um, all over the marble, except for the places that I drew those highlights or those white kind of box and triangles. So I'm going to go all over it with the teal, the greens, and the yellows. And then I'm going to take a wet paintbrush and I'm going to just kind of wet the marble and it will allow those colors to blend into each other a little bit. I'm just taking water on my brush and I'm just going around the marble and I'm allowing that water to soak in and blend those colors. So I'm avoiding those white spaces, but I am smoothing it over and as it sits there with the water on it, it will actually blend more and more and more. Okay, the last one I'm going to do is with watercolor. So you all got a watercolor set from me and it should look something like this. If you have a little cup of water, you can use it to um, what we call wake up the colors. So I'm taking water and I'm adding it to my dry palette to wake up my colors. And the, the more water in there, the better it will spread. The less water in there, um, it might look dry, and if you can see the, the lines from your paintbrush, that means it's too dry and you need more water. So remember to wake up your colors um, before you use them, and you can see them starting to spread on the paper. I just took a little water. The water was in my brush, not so much where it's going to drip all over the place, but just enough to put a little bit of water inside that space and make it a little on the wet side so that I can spread that color around. So it's pretty simple. The lighter the color, the more water you want. The darker the color, the less water. But remember, too little water will make streaky lines from your brush. Don't worry about going outside the lines. This will happen and it's okay. Um, when you're finished with all these, you're going to let it dry if you've used something that is wet. If not, you are going to cut them out and then glue them on your paper.
Next, I'm going to use all three techniques to show you how to add your shadowing. So for the one on the left, I'm using my color pencil and I added black to the base of that marble. So right down at the bottom, I added black and I shaded it to make it look like it was shadowed. I added a little light black as a reflection on the paper and then I'm using the colors that I used in the marble and I'm lightly coloring so it looks like so since the light bounces off those marbles or actually shines through it too you'll be able to see the colors from those marbles on the paper so I'm using a little bit of black to make like a gray and then I'm using the colors from the marble to color in lightly for that shadowed effect. The next one I'm going to do is the one that has watercolor. So I'm going to take a wet brush. I'm going to add a little bit to my black, just a little. Remember, the more water, the um, lighter that color is going to be. So I'm going to add it to the edge of my marble. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of water, because I think this is definitely enough black, and take a little bit of water and just spread that out a little bit. You want it to kind of fade into your other colors. And then I'm going to add a little bit of a uh, kind of this oval here underneath. So where my shadow is on my marble, that's kind of where I want my shadow to reflect onto the paper. And then I'm going to take a little bit of the colors that I use inside the marble and I'm going to add kind of that reflection into that space as well. So I'm adding a little bit of the pinks and the blues and the purples and all that stuff. This last one I'm going to do the same. I'm going to take a gray marker and I'm going to go along this outer edge. I will take a wet brush and I will spread out that gray marker to allow it to look a little shaded. And then I will add that oval on the paper with that gray marker. Just adding a little oval here. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the color from the markers too. I'm not going to fill it in as much because I don't want it to look too dark. So I'm just kind of adding, going to add like a couple little light lines of the marker. And then I will do my wet paintbrush and I will let it kind of smooth in over there. All right, there you go. There are three ways to make your Glenray Tudor marbles. I hope that you had fun and you get to pick which kind or which way you want to try. You can do all three, you can do one, you can do two, um, but I look forward to seeing the cool um, shapes and colors that you created and which techniques you decide to use. Have fun!